Okay, part two of my Seminole clothing program. Now, um, this will take a lot to explain in just a short 14 to 15 minutes. Anyway, Seminole clothing had two different influences. One was the European trade goods and also whatever would be the uh, popular fashion or the dominant culture of the time that would affect the clothing. So the Seminole clothing is actually being uh, influenced by uh, European clothing trends in contact with the Europeans. And it's uh, ver cut very similar to uh, the clothing of the day. Now, uh, you can see in the uh, paintings that it was a uh, very uh, complex and elaborate and showy. Uh, another reason is that the Seminole culture is determined by what they can carry with them since they're a nomadic people. Then the what they're uh, showing off with their art form and their expression is expressed in the clothing. Well, by the time they got to the Everglades, you really had to downsize on all the fancy parts and adapt to the warmer environment, uh, being wet all the time. You could see Billy Bull eggs here. Uh, really switched to a lighter white shirt. That's what you see in the late 1800s. The women's dress are kind of the same as what you saw as Micanope's wife. And this was kind of common in the late 1800s, 1880s, 1890s, the men switching to uh, plain shirts, a vest, and uh, they're, they're on their feet a lot, walking, canoeing everywhere. Uh, those are uh, turbans, or, or pro probably their blankets wrapped up. Uh, you have to carry it all with you, so you can't really uh, get anything that will snag or catch. And uh, here's some other pictures there. Most of these uh, Seminoles are barefoot, except this one they're wearing uh, shoes or brogans there in this one also <laughs> some socks so they probably went to the train post they got some really nice footwear now you see next uh, chief tallahassee he's wearing a coat and a fancy beaded pouch and sash and his sons are uh, wearing very plain shirts the shirts are actually rising pretty high above the knees there as a uh, kids usually dress kind of like that and uh but the coat was something that didn't change all that much over the decades. Here's a uh, coat collected about 1905. The zigzag uh, work on the bomb, it's not patchwork yet, it's applique, which means uh, a piece of cloth sewn directly on it. Uh, quilting is another term. You can see in uh, 1858 in the Harper's Weekly newspaper, uh, Negoci Hajo has a uh, coat on and all the fancy stuff. Billy Bullock's uh, wife, uh, his second wife, she's a uh, plane. She has a dress on, uh, the cape, uh, lots of beads. Uh, she's holding her hand across the uh, midriff because that's a sign of modesty. Not all that changed. This is a few decades later, about 20 years later, there in Macaulay's uh, expedition. Uh, also no snowshoes. You see some applique or uh, decoration on the bottom of the skirt, uh, the b large cape. And then, you know, this next photo, this is about 1913, still about the same. You're noticing some more color and material added to the middle of the skirt and the end of the skirt and also a kind of fancy cape they're wearing. Uh, this is a postcard from 1898, and this is a good example showing the whole family and what everyone's wearing, uh, what I just previously mentioned. There, but it's also about to change really quick on the Seminole clothing style and Mikasukis at, at this point it's kind of interchangeably. Uh, these men here they have coats on but also notice more of the applique. It's not yet patchwork it's the material st stitched directly on it. This early 1900s postcards uh, the women have the colorful kind of dresses uh, the colored strips on the ruffles And then uh, about 1910, they, they kind of the plain shirt, kind of what calls what we call a big shirt. It's like a big shirt, almost kind of like a dress. It's one piece. It's like a, a, a one piece garment. You see a colored strip. They started sewing different colored strips into it. And also the, the dress still has the colored ruffles. But then the Seminoles got sewing machines and boy they took off with the sewing machines and knew right away to do with it that's uh, when you see patchwork start showing up about 1915 there uh, wasted no time at all 
And then uh, what we know the Seminoles as just being real masters at the patchwork, the clothing, uh, really taking off from here. The nice thing is that uh, tourism also affected the uh, Seminole clothing because the Seminoles uh, would be wearing clothing at these uh, tourism uh, stops and the tourists would say well, look at all these Indians they're wearing fancy clothing even offered to buy the clothing off their back well you couldn't turn down an offer that sometimes the tourists would want to buy it so you'd have a few extra to buy and the fancier the better and Florida in the land boom of the 1920s was opening up here uh, dredging out the uh, Tamiami Canal in South Florida building the Tamiami Roadway and suddenly the Seminoles, the uh, former secluded Everglades, are now open up to uh, tourism. The Seminoles move their camps up to the edge of, of the roadway, Tamiami Trail. People would stop and uh, visit the Seminoles. Here's Governor Martin when they were building the Tamiami Trail, uh, agreeing with the Seminoles. In the 1920s, that big shirt, suddenly you see wide bands of patchwork on it. And you see the uh, suddenly Seminole uh, and Miccosukee tourist attractions. People come by, stop, and see the Indians. And it's in our way, it was a way they could preserve their way of life in the village life, as uh, also as uh, selling the crafts. There are people who come in and uh, you know see the chickies, the Seminoles living in the chickies, cooking, uh, wrestling alligators, selling goods. And this became the Seminoles. Uh, became the most photographed of any tribe that uh, anyone can see. All these photos are from postcards or archival photos. Uh, very easy to get some of these images on eBay and all that. And here's another big shirt, um, 1920s time period, in a uh, canoe on the Tamiami Canal, dugout canoe. And here's some more women. There you see the uh, mother on the right hand side. She has some of those wide bands of patchwork that started showing up in the 1920s. The girls have different colored dresses. You can't really tell if it's all patchwork or just colored strips. Uh, some of these old foes, it's a little hard to tell because they're hand tinted. Here's another 1920s, 1930s style. Now women's clothing, it's a little harder to say a specific style or, style or change. This is a photograph from Brighton Reservation in the Ford Archives. Uh, one of the girls has predominantly patchwork. Their skirts are very plain. Brighton Reservation was really the last place to get tourism there. And this uh, skirt from the 1930s and 40s, the cape the women were wearing became longer, more kind of like a poncho type. Um, also, I could say you could also be uh, mosquito netting in the Everglades, so the women are well protected from the sun and the mosquitoes. And that's one reason why the, all the long clothing, it's its not really heavy, it's all lightweight material, and it's not s tough against your skin. Here, uh, photograph probably the 1950s, you see the women in all the colorful dresses in line, and it's really individual choice how many patchwork stripes they want on their skirts. This is probably about the 19, late 50s, 1960s, uh, which I think was the height of all the patchwork there. You see the capes became more of a real light uh, nylon mesh. This is Charlie Cypress, uh, 1920s, wearing a big shirt, very colorful if we had a color photograph. And this is probably at Glades Cross Mission around Everglades City. And uh, Charlie actually went back to the old ways. This shirt right here, this plain one, is one he wore later in life when he was at Silver Spring. So he actually regressed in the style. The shirt there to the right of him is another big shirt, 1920s style. And this was an exhibit we had at the Florida Museum recently. Uh, and it's a temporary one. It's probably traveling around somewhere else in the state. Beautiful, wide areas of patchwork. Now you see the uh, family here. This postcard's from the 1930s. Gentleman on the left uh, looks like his pants are kind of, his trousers are kind of full stuff, full material. What happened to those big shirts? It made it difficult to stuff in trousers. So you had the bottom skirt suddenly lost all its patchwork. This is a very brief, or short, uh, <laughs> I hate to use the word brief, 
uh, style that was only in the 1930s and then it disappeared altogether. Here's some other of the uh, transitional styles, the yellow, yellow coat and the green coat. Bottom half of the big shirt has no patchwork at all. Very simple skirt. You get home, just pull it out of your trousers and all that. Here, this is my favorite photograph in the collection, a uh, common postcard. These men are showing four different styles in order from the uh, left. Plain shirt, about 1900. Adding some strips of uh, color, 1910, next to him. The third gentleman, uh, the big shirt, 1920s, with the big wide patchwork. Really nice. That's kind of my favorite style. And then the gentleman on the far right, that's Corey Osceola. He's in the patchwork jacket. What the uh, Seminoles are probably well known for, the, the 20s and the 40s, the, the kind of the height of the tourism. Uh, and then the 50s is... When, when everybody sees the patchwork, and that's what they think of the Seminoles. Uh, Corey Osceola, he's kind of known as the founder of the Naples Seminole community down where I was at. Most of the Seminoles there have some connection to him. A really a nice community because of him. This is Mike Osceola, 12-year-old alligator wrestler. This is another reason why the Seminoles switch from the big shirt to trousers. It's not very convenient to wrestle alligators like this, uh, unless you're wearing some uh, real strong trousers. There, I like to show this postcard in front of school groups because a lot of the kids are about that age, see somebody, the boys see somebody their age wrestling alligators. And this this is a uh, Mike Osceola, same guy, years later, he has his own Indian village and gator jungle wrestling. There, he's uh, gotten real fancy, gotten modern clothes, Still has a strip of patchwork on his shirt, kind of a modern style. His son, I know him too. His son is about one of the best dressed Seminole and Miccosukees that I know. And uh, so most people think of the Seminoles as uh, this era, like this boy here with the patchwork jacket and the blue jeans and bare feet. And that's kind of what they think of uh, Seminole clothing. And here's a Miccosukee family, John Tiger's village. It's now the Miccosukee cultural center on the Tamiami Trail uh, about uh, 60 miles from Naples or uh, I don't know about 25 miles from Miami uh, the women are kind of all wearing different styles and colors it's everybody's wearing the clothing of their choice you know you're not really in one style you got uh, some traditional and modern mix well that's it for this program I'll show some examples that I have in my collection next